Welcome to this awareness session on our apprenticeship provision here at ENSYS. First of all, let me introduce you to who we are. Our mission is to be an ethically chosen training provider promoting inclusivity, expertise and quality as part of our learning and development strategies. Our growth will be prided on our ability to build and manage relationships and respond to the needs of our sectors and stakeholders. Our vision is to leave a legacy of highly qualified workers, primarily in the health and social care sector, to support the current generation of workers and provide the stepping stones for the next, to push the boundaries of learning and development with brave and challenging curriculums that provide our learners with the tools to construct their future. Our values are as follows, compassion, agile, resilient, inclusive, nurturing, and growth. Now, for those of you who are looking to join one of our health and social care pathways, uh, there's a few um, career paths you can take with the apprenticeships, starting there at adult care worker, down to your level threes, fours, fives, and also your sixes and sevens. You can also integrate some of the professional studies apprenticeships, such as team leader and operations manager. There's many, many different paths you can take with apprenticeships within the adult care sector. The same goes for the professional study sector. You can start at level two, go to threes, fours and up to level fives. There's many, many more career paths on apprenticeships you can take. You can visit the Institute of Apprenticeships website to find out more. If you are in the health and social care sector and wondering about your actual careers that you can take. If you pause this video now, there's a few on screen that you might want to look at and consider. Completing a level two care worker can open up a multitude of pathways. And once you get onto the level three, that will open up even more. So the apprenticeships itself, they're made up of several different elements, standard, diploma, functional skills, off the job training, and endpoint assessment, including the gateway meeting. As part of your standard, and if you're also completing the diploma, you will complete monthly remote masterclasses or e-learning to cover the teaching and learning that is required. For the diploma, uh, this is where you'll be gathering a portfolio of evidence which will be assessed by your skills coach. For functional skills, you will receive monthly support from your skills coach and e-learning through a website called BKSB. As part of any apprenticeship, you have to ensure that 20% of your training is off the job. These will be planned activities to support you to meet those 20% off the job uh, requirements. And it's not actually here us here at ENSYS that will assess you as being ready. This will be completed by an independent endpoint assessor. This can take up to 12 weeks to complete. As well as all of that, you will get monthly support sessions complete formal reviews with yourself and your employer and also have an individual learning plan. So let's look a little bit deeper into some of these elements. So first of all, why do I need to complete functional skills? Well, they're an integral part of your overall apprenticeship. You cannot achieve your apprenticeship without passing your functional skills or already having a valid exemption. Please speak to one of our team to see if you already have a valid exemption and don't have to complete functional skills. The apprenticeship you're completing will determine which functional skills you need to complete and to what level. And each functional skill typically takes around six months to complete. So functional skills are primarily made up of two elements. You've got maths and English. Both are available at level one and level two. So functional skills are a recognised alternative to GCSEs. So a level two is the equivalent to a GCSE grade four to nine or C to A plus, and a level one are equivalent of D to G, or that's a grade one to three. Maths is made up of two elements. You will have a calculator test and a non-calculator test. And English is made up of three mandatory components, which is a reading exam, a writing exam, and a speaking, listening, and communication assessment. These will be gone through with you in more detail with your skills coach. Let's look deeper at off the job. So off the job is 20%. So 20% of your time should be learnt learning new knowledge, skills and behaviours and also um, doing new things with your employer. If you pause the video here, you will be able to look at some of the things we suggest your employer does and the virtual and e-learning that we also have available. For those of you who are completing health and social care courses, we do have access to some NHS support as well. 
there's a few key individuals uh, within your program. You have your skills coach, who is your main point of contact. They will complete your progress reviews and your individual learning plans. They'll be on hand to provide as much support and guidance as you need and give feedback on your work. They will also provide that functional skills learning, conduct master classes and additional learning sessions with you and set the activities that you need to complete. We're very lucky here at ENSYS that we have a team of specialists. So when you complete your master classes, it might not be your skills coach that completes that master class, but a absolute specialist in that area. We also have a internal quality assurance team. They check to make sure that we are giving you correct feedback and fair assessment. They quality check your work, provide feedback to your skills coach. And if you do need to make an appeal, they will be your main point of contact. Every organisation is also subject to external quality assurance. They are there again to check we are working fairly and to make sure the specific standards are being met. They will audit your work before being allowed to be certificated and provide feedback. As already mentioned, you will also have an endpoint assessor. They work for your employers as they will choose which endpoint assessment organisation to choose. They are independent from us and they will complete your assessment activities, market and provide feedback on your assessment. Now, looking at the programme specifics, I'm going to put up each of the programmes. If you pause the video, you'll be able to look at the specific programmes that you want to look at. So first of all, this is a typical journey for an adult care worker at level two. This is a typical journey for a level three lead adult care worker. A typical journey for the lead practitioner in adult care, which is level four. The level five leader in adult care. That concludes our care provision. For professional studies, we have the typical journey for the level two customer service practitioner. The level three business administrator. The level three team leader supervisor qualification. And to conclude our professional studies provision, the level five operations and departmental manager. At Gateway and Endpoint Assessment, it will be your employer that decides you are ready for your endpoint assessment. Now, within the adult care provision, there's four different ways uh, to be assessed, depending on which qualification that you are doing. So with the adult care worker, you get a, a multiple choice test and a professional discussion, which is the same for level three. For level four, it's an observation of practice and a professional discussion. And for level five, it's an observation of leading a team and a professional discussion. As part of your adult care provision, you will also have to complete the relevant diploma before you can go to Gateway. For professional studies, uh, for customer service, it's an observation, a professional discussion and a showcase. For level three business admin, there's a knowledge exam, showcase, portfolio based interview and a project that you will need to complete three months before your gateway. For team leader, you have a portfolio, presentation, interview and professional discussion. And for the level five operations manager, you have a portfolio, professional discussion, project proposal and a presentation. So what guidance and support is available and what do we need from you? For the employers, we need you to allow time for your apprentices to complete their work, off the job activities, attend masterclasses and sessions, be there at progress reviews and complete the gateway meeting requirements. As an apprentice, you need to obviously complete your work and activities, attend your masterclasses, complete your e-learning, complete your functional skills assessments, come to your progress reviews, work through your individual learning plan and complete that gateway meeting. Ensis, as your provider, we are not just here to help you gain your apprenticeship. We want to support you in as many ways as you need. So that can be anything from mental health and well-being, safeguarding, time management, human skills and digital skills. If you want to learn it, we're here to help you learn it. We want to make sure that you have the best possible start to your career and your apprenticeship. So what are the next steps? You'll need to complete your eligibility and documentation, your initial assessments for maths and English on BKSB, 
You'll need to book in your enrolment session. Your skills coach will contact you to do this. You'll be able to meet your skills coach and then plan in your masterclasses and modules. As part of your enrolment, you will complete a skills scan. It's important that you are honest with where you are with particular knowledge, skills and behaviours. One way to look at it is consider how you would score yourself as a driver, then compare yourself to Lewis Hamilton. This is a really good way to compare yourself to experts in your field. Look at the CPD that you have completed. If you haven't completed any CPD in the last 12 months in a particular area, you might not be as up on things as you think you might be. Laws and legislation change all the time. Have a look at how confident you are. How well do you know your policies, processes and procedures as they are often reflected in the law? Again, if this isn't fantastic, you might want to grade yourself slightly lower than expected. Have discussions with your line manager and colleagues. They might be able to help you score where you are. And finally, if you were to deliver training on that particular area, would you be able to answer all the necessary questions? For those of you completing diploma as part of the adult care provision, you will also have to pick some diploma units. When picking your unit, pick new knowledge, skills and behaviours that you want to learn. Again, discuss this with your manager and colleagues. If you've done units as part of your mandatory training, you're possibly already competent in those, so don't pick them. Consider your future career goals and aspirations, both internally and externally, and what is your personal succession plan? Finally, you have to be able to gather evidence towards your diploma. So if you cannot complete it as part of your job, unfortunately, that is not a unit you can do. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions, please contact a member of our team. And we can't wait to see you to start on your journey with us on your apprenticeship.